Well, last year we were in Hawaii, and we were here almost uh, in 1999, that's correct. Um, from a facility point of view, this is a wonderful facility, but in terms of um, being familiar with a facility and having access to things that you have access during the season, uh, it's always better to be at your home base, which would be El Segundo. You know, we have our training room, our weight room, our theater, our court. Uh, but um, about a month and a half ago, Luke and I talked about, um, you know, the bonding part of a training camp, which is, you know, completely different than what I just talked about, uh, getting, the, getting the guys away <clears throat> and giving them a place where they could uh, be together for five or six days and uh, bond as a staff and as a young team. And uh, we've gone to Palm Springs before and we've gone to San Diego before and Luke was most comfortable with uh, Santa Barbara. So uh, we're not used to the, the facility. I mean, clearly we're used to our facility in El Segundo, uh, but from a bonding and a chemistry point of view, uh, uh, Luke and I felt this would be a great spot. Mitch, based on how this squad is set up currently, what are your expectations for this season and what, how would you define success? Well, I, I'm excited um, be, because it's a new beginning. Uh, number one, uh, as much as we're going to miss uh, Kobe, you know, we've had him for 20 years and we've, you know, taken his presence for granted. Um, you know, after 20 years, I think it's about time that, that we look to the future. And with him retiring and, and our young players, I mean, we had some picks in the draft that are very high. And um, <laughs> you get those picks because you're not a very good team. Uh, but we did get picks. Um, we're excited about uh, the growth of those picks. Uh, we're excited about today's practice. You know, this year I think we got two players that uh, we're excited about in the draft, uh, Zubac and Ingram. Uh, then there's last year's picks and then Julius Randle the year before who got hurt and missed a complete season. So we're excited about our young guys. We've added some older veterans um, that we think are, are going to give us a presence in the locker room. Uh, help us uh, on the court, you know, hopefully win games and get better as the season progresses. You know, from my point of view, um, I want this group to show great chemistry and as the season goes on, get better and better and, and not only have fun playing, but be, but be fun to watch. And uh, certainly, you know, the number of wins is a factor. You know, we, we can't continue to lose games, you know, every year. So you do have to show progress. And um, as long as we show progress, you know, have fun as a team and are fun to watch, um, that, that's what I'm hoping for. And that's what, to me, would define a successful season. So is there a certain number of wins that you have? Yeah, I can't pick a number of wins. Okay, uh, last year we had 17. Okay, it's got, it's got to be more than 17. Okay, and, and it can't be a game or two more. You know, we have to show progress. You know, are we a playoff team? Are we a contending team? You know, anything can happen at any time in the season. We, we've seen that here in our organization when you make a deal and all of a sudden things turn around. You know, clearly that's a possibility. But we're not going into the season thinking that that's what we're going to do. Or we, we want these young players uh, to get minutes to develop. Uh, we think several of them, you know, can be starters and perhaps even leave an imprint in this league. Okay, so uh, that's my approach and that's my take on where we want this team and where I want this team to go this season. And Mitch, to build off points you were just outlined earlier, right? are there any specific things with this young core and their game and development that you'll be looking for that will kind of give you clarity on what they're Long -term well, we had some guys that have been with us for a year or two, and, and they have to get better. Okay, Jordan was rewarded this summer, um, and he earned it as a second-round pick who had two very good years in a very competitive off-season market. Okay, but he has to continue to get better. Uh, D'Angelo and um, Larry and Anthony from last year, you know, have to show us progress from their first year. Our other two young players, you know, they're rookies. We have to just see how that's going to go. But the other guy's got to show progress. 
uh, and which is what you'd expect from a, a guy who's a player who's 19 or 20 in this league after a year or two. What's a reasonable expectation for Brandon Ingram this year? What do you want to see from him? I think it's going to be a long season, you know, on um, a young player that um, has to be stronger, has to get stronger, you know, has to show that uh, he can play for 82 games. I don't anticipate uh, that he would start. It's not something that I think uh, has to happen, even though he's a number two pick. Um, I don't know if he will start or if he won't start. That's going to be based on Luke and preseason and what Luke thinks is best for the team. Um, he's got to continue to work uh, not only on his game, but he's got to continue to work on stamina and getting stronger in this league. Uh, certainly, we've had players in this league um, that, that did not have great strength, that were very successful. Uh, but there is, you know, a part of me that says, you know, 82 games, uh, he has to work on every day, you know, taking care of his body, his diet, uh, rest, and make it through an 82-game season. Because I think he's going to play a lot. Now, our other rookie, you know, I'm not sure that's the case, but he has to work in practice. But I do expect Brandon to play, and we did take him number two. Um, so clearly we felt that there's a great upside there. So we have to see progress as the season goes along. Mitch, there was a lot of praise coming out of Vegas and, and what Ingram did with the CBOSA select camp. Uh, how, how do you take that into account from what you would see from him scouting? And, and I know you were there with watching him play with right. some of the best players and, and how, how he might have matched up. You know, it's great. It's only three days. You know, the NBA season is a completely different animal. And, um, <clears throat> You know, starting at the end of September and going through hopefully, you know, at least, you know, the spring, um, it's completely different. It's completely different. Uh, as a number two pick, you should play well. That that are expectations. To, to, to follow up, though, could you see directly though with like, him belonging to a certain aspect, even at 18, with some of those guys that actually went and represented the team? Like, did he? Everybody looks at it differently, you know, through different eyes. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's not like he, he starred in Las Vegas. You know, I would say that he held his own. And for a young 18 or 19-year-old player, he didn't look out of place. But, but he wasn't the best player in Las Vegas. So, you know, how do I look at it? Um, with, with most high draft picks uh, in the last 10, 15 years, they're young players they're 19, sometimes 18, and you draft them when they're very, very young, and it's going to take some time for them to get better and better. Make sure your office overlooks the practice court. What's the activity been like when you're looking down the summer? It's not so much the, the, the visual. It's the, the audio with, <laughs> with the music. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but... Um, I guess in Golden State, they, they play music very loud during practice, and that's what we're doing now. So uh, from my, court, my, my office that does overlook the court, um, yeah, actually sometimes I'm glad I'm in my office rather than on the court because it's loud, and I just walked over from Rob Jim, and they got the music going there too. So I'm sure at some point in the next four or five days, when you walk by or come in after, you'll, you'll hear it. So that's never happened before? No. Since you've been around. No. It's new. No, it's completely new. Do you like the playlist so far? <clears throat> it, some of it has to be censored. <laughs> so we have to be careful. Who else is in the gym? I guess that's just a part of the times, you know. But um, it's a little racy. <laughs> How much was keeping the younger guys kind of on the right path and also mentoring them, the reason for a lot of the off-season acquisitions with Joel and with uh, Moskov and with Calderon? Well, we had a lot of uh, cap space that was freed up. You know, once again, um, you know, having Kobe for 20 years is a blessing. You know, but when he, he did decide to call it, it quits. Um, and we had kind of kicked the can down the road for two or three years, timing our contracts that we would have, you know, significant cap space. 
and um, you know we knew we'd have a lot more than we've ever had this summer. Uh, there is a minimum that you have to get to, you know, in the NBA. Uh, but once again, our feeling was is with six or seven young players, it was time to add uh, veteran players that that we think would fit into the system and play and help us win. Um, we are still going to have significant cap flexibility next year. Um, but then, you know, as the years go on, you know, your players that are first round picks become eligible for extensions. And then you have to plan, plan a little bit more carefully, you know, hoping that you pay them. Because if you do, that means they're good players. But you do have to make an allocation to have cap room down the road. Uh, so we do know that this summer coming up, we're going to have flexibility. And then we'll just have to see what it is going forward. Did kind of who they are as people and what they can do in the locker room, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about just kind of them as, as role models. Did that come into play more yes. so this year because of all the younger talent? And yes. Yes, it's always great to have players that can play that are good in the locker room. You know, sometimes you have to make compromises. You know, a player that is really talented that, that might not um, – you know, and those are decisions we have to sort our way through during the summer. But the guys we added, um, in particular Luau, I think, um, you know, because he's played a lot of minutes, you know, he's proven himself in this league, and, um, you know, his character, you know, on the court and in the locker room is impeccable. So we felt that was a, a huge acquisition. Um, and then we picked up a couple of veterans beyond that that we think can help too. You know, unexpectedly we got, you know, Jose. Um, you know, Chicago needed to create some space, and we were able to get a player that we think uh, can play for us, and at the same time, add some leadership in the locker room, and we also got a couple of picks out of the deal, so. When, when you factor in what you saw from D'Angelo's rookie season, and it's all season work, summer league play, and the new coaching staff, what do you think he can accomplish this year? Well, it's up to him. Um, I think last year, you know, he had moments of brilliance, and then he had moments um, that clearly showed he was a 19-year-old, you know, player for the first time and playing in the NBA. Uh, this offseason, which was very long, he was in the gym every day, um, working. Not, not, not that he was the only one, but he, he seemed to show, he, he seemed to have gotten a feel for what the first year is all about. And he got that behind him, and, and now he understands the NBA. And, and although it's been for almost 40 years ago, I, I understand the feeling. You know, when you're a rookie, everything is new. And then that second year, you step on the court. And even though you might be only 20 or 21, okay, it's, it's the second time around and you're a veteran. Uh, so I think getting that first year under his belt was important to him. And he clearly showed that he could play in this league at a very high level. Okay, but now um, it's kind of like your sophomore year. You know, expectations during your freshman year are, are at such a, you know, well, we don't know. But, but now, okay, you got a year under your belt, you should be better. And um, I think that's the approach he's taken. I think he's going to have a good year, a really good year. Mitch, can you tell us a little bit about the process of getting Meta for another year, at least, you know, the training camp? Meta wanted to come back. You know, we kept the spot. Um, you know, he's going to have to earn his way on the team, which is what he did last year. Uh, we know, worst case scenario, for the next 28 days, he's going to be a huge asset to this team. In other words, if he goes to the 28 days of camp and then we decide not to keep him, you know, which was discussed with him, you know, he, he, he understands. Uh, those 28 days are going to pay huge dividends to this organization. But we didn't expect him to make the team last year. And he made it, and uh, the same thing can happen this year. Um, so um, I, I don't expect that, that if he makes the team, he's going to be in the rotation. Um, but if he did make the team, uh, I know practices, and I know the locker room uh, would be a real, real good place. Discussed him possibly not making the team. Was there a thought of him potentially joining the defenders if that was to happen? Was not discussed. Mitch, going back to you know you Ryan 
um, the whole staff went and watched the USA China game at Staples Center. Mm -hmm. What did you see from Yi that made you want to bring him on, and how do you think he fits into this team? Well, he's going to have to earn his way on this team also. Um, we we had worked him out over the last two years um, individually, several times. Um, you know, in, in China, you know, his relationship uh, with the sports world, um, in terms of his status, and you know, financially, uh, was such that you know we were not in a position to really recruit him, although we've been looking at him for the last two years. Um, this summer, with you know the cap going way up, uh, our flexibility, um, and then knowing what we knew about him through the workouts, not so much the game against the USA team. Um, I think he would he would admit that you know that the Chinese team was completely overmatched. By, by the gold medal, gold medal winning uh, USA team. And um, it's very difficult to show your best, you know, when you're playing against a team that's so powerful as our team was this summer. So we didn't put a whole lot of stock in that game. Um, having said that, he has not been in the NBA for the last four or five years. Uh, we know he's got NBA size, athleticism, uh, certainly you know, he can hold his own physically. You know, he's got a great skill. I mean, he, can, he, can, he has the ability, you know, to shoot, to shoot the basketball. Um, very, very athletic. Okay, but he's been away for four years. So um, he's here, and he's eager to be here. It works, you know, with his team uh, back in China. It works financially. And from our point of view, you know, we have 28 days to evaluate him as an NBA player. And um, we'll have to wait, just wait to see how it plays out. Two more guys. Mitch, you know, you've mentioned new, exciting beginning, and, but you've also kind of talked about how you guys kicked the can down the road a couple of years to get <coughs> to this beginning. Right. There's also the sense, though, there's also the timeline that Jim and Jeannie have discussed and with this being kind of the third year. Do you, do you feel like there is a, a threshold this team has to hit or a, a win-loss mark this team needs to hit for the front office to remain intact to be a part of this beyond the beginning? Yeah, yeah, you know, I answered the question already, which is what the expectations are for me with this team this year. You know, I'm not really um, in a position to debate, you know, some of the stuff that you just talked about. You know, I'm not even sure what was said with, with certainty. Okay, from my point of view, uh, we've created a team that has a lot of young talent, that, that, that can grow into, I believe, really good and, and hopefully NBA players that, that can leave an imprint on this, on this league. And then I think we've surrounded them with some older veterans that can help us win games. I'm excited about our coaching staff. I want to see improvement in the young players. Um, I want to see some production from our rookies, and I want our team to be fun to watch, I want them to have fun playing, and I want them to get better as the season goes along. I don't know how that translates into anything else under my control. You know, wins and losses, you know, I couldn't pick a number. I could guess, I would not guess in front of you. That would, that's not something I would do. I'd have to stare at it for the rest of the year. Right. Is there any added benefit to that? It just happened. It wasn't a plan. Um, I think a lot of people, when they, they look at Luau, they, they don't say, oh, he's a, a foreigner. You know, he was uh, in this country in high school, and he went, went to a school, played a year, and then he played in the NBA for many years. So I don't think it – but, but it kind of just um, – it just happened. You know, we just looked around one day, and, and we had six players, not by design. Um, uh, there's not one of them that, that we don't feel good about having. 
It's not like we took a player just to get a player. I think they can all contribute.